What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. Thanks for tuning in. New every Tuesday here on The Charlie Show. Something that we need to talk about is plugs. There, I'd say a couple times a week, at least, I get an email or a call from someone who has a battery pack that has bullet plugs on them. And we're all familiar with this type of pack in the uh, racing world. They went to these style packs. They have plugs on both sides. So sometimes these are in different orientations for different brands. Sometimes you put the pack in the wrong way. Next thing you know, you're plugging a speed control in backwards. And that is never a good time. Even if your speed control has reverse voltage protection, um, it'll still cause problems for the power capacitors and the rest of that stuff. So you wanna try to avoid that. And the other thing that I really, really am not a fan of is that if you were to wear these bullets out from using this pack for many years or many months, whatever the case may be, you're gonna be constantly plugging this in and out of the battery pack, and that is gonna wear out this bullet plug. I mean, this hasn't been plugged in and out that much, and it's already got you know some signs of wear just from being in and out of there a handful of times that I've used this. So I tend to make myself a set of pigtails that I leave on the battery pack all times. That way I never have to really unplug these guys and they don't get worn out, these don't get dirty, and they kind of last a lot longer. Um, you've had, have you ever seen bullets? They get loose too over time. That's why they have these splits in them. So there can be some tension. So sometimes you gotta stick like a screwdriver down in there and get a little bit of tension on there to open it back up. Um, you can, pro tip, take a piece of insulation off small gauge wire and stuff that down in there so it's a little springy. You don't wanna do a toothpick or anything else because it'll collect moisture. The silicone insulation isn't gonna do any of that. It'll just add some nice springiness to it. So, uh, But like I said, I leave these in there all the time and then for balancing, I. You know, you would think, okay, well then you just unplug this to charge it, and then you plug it back, and that, that defeats the whole purpose. The idea of this, you know, process basically, is that these guys live in the battery pack forever. Um, so what I do is I take, this is what you would normally have for a charge adapter for these. It's two bullets and the balance lead. So I solder the XT60 that matches onto this, and I plug that into the balance lead, and that's it super super tricky but while we're in there we'll talk a little bit about soldering and connectors and all that fun stuff but that way i make a dedicated charge adapter for these types of batteries and i could still use this regular xt60 charger lead with battery packs that have the balance leads also but i don't know if that's even necessary but when it comes to soldering i like to have my trusty wood blocks so they don't melt things on my table when i'm soldering I always like to use a pair of wire strippers so that when you go to strip and tin your, your wires, you don't get the little strands going everywhere. And then I tend to use a 6040 rosin core solder. Most of the solder you're gonna find these days that's good for the earth is lead-free solder, and that's what you should use if that's what you have. You just have to have a little bit of flux also. It makes the whole process a whole lot easier because the lead-free solder, a little higher temperature, and it usually they don't have it with the flux in there. The iron that I use is a normal chisel tip is what it's called. And I wanna say it's like a three or four millimeter one. Maybe it's a little bit bigger than that, but. And it runs at around 700 to 800 degrees usually. So I take these beautiful two stage bullets off of here. And then you'll notice there's two small leads also for the, the balance connector. On the other end of this, this side goes into your charger. This is your, your balance lead and that's, it goes into the charger itself. So I just lop these guys off because I'm gonna re-solder all of this anyway. I save these just in case, always. Extra wires and plugs and things like that are always nice to have around. And then when you do wire soldering, you always want to uh, strip and tin things, strip and tin. If you don't tin the wires ahead of time, it's real easy for the strands and whatnot to not go where they need to. You can get a lot of cold solder joints that way. So a little bit of tinning on the wires goes a long way for your soldering job to be a whole lot easier. So after I strip them, I always try to take the strands of wire and then twist these as tight as I can because you really don't want solder in your connections. Solder is actually a bad conductor. So the least amount of solder that you can use but still have enough on the wire is, is usually better because that way you're not infesting your wire with solder that is a very poor conductor. And I know for all of our European or international friends, it is in fact spelled solder. But aluminum is also spelled aluminum, not aluminium. So I'll take them where I can get them. 
So a little bit of solder on there and I try to heat it up and then feed the solder from the other side and get a nice even layer on there. Not really like a bubble on the wire, more just uh, so you can kind of get a nice thin layer across all the strands. A little bit of bubble of solder is okay, but try to do as little as I, I can, just so that it doesn't want to soak into that wire. And then I'm just going back, reflowing everything real quickly to make sure I get it all the way around. Cause basically- I got a little ball of solder on the end of the iron. Can you see that? And then I can just roll the wire through that. And then I'm gonna feed in, these are XT60s. If you've never seen these before, best plug ever. It's gonna be just a little tight. So I'm gonna open that hole. So I just need to open up that little insulator guy. So these same basic soldering, soldering techniques pretty much apply to a lot of things. You, I do get a lot of emails and comments from folks about problems with soldering and this, that, and the other thing. And I always try to do as many soldering videos as I can because I think the more of them that get out there, the better. And if you've watched these before, they're always much the same. And this is the way that I've been soldering for years. So I feel like it works okay. And I, I fix a lot of stuff for people. But these guys are marked positive and negative. Make sure you check that. And uh, AMAS is the brand. These things are great. I've been using AMAS plugs for a long time. I recommend them highly for everything. A lot of the stuff that we do in customer service is me talking to people about trying to try some different plugs. Because the a lot of the plugs that are out there are knockoffs of whatever they are. They come pre-installed on the battery packs, but they're not the real plug. And a lot of the plugs that are out there have been around for so long that, so I just do a little bit of solder in there. They've been around for so long that they're not really big enough for what we're trying to ask them to do these days. And with any sort of, let me get back to this a task at hand here. What I try to do is get the wire down into the, the connector so that it's not floating in the solder at all. The wire floating in the solder can, it's basically like having a resistor between your wire and your connector. Cause the solder, like I said, is a bad conductor. Get that wire all the way down in the cup and then it's nice and smooth along the edges as far as the solder flow goes. And then I'm just gonna tack the sense wire. This is the, the balance sense wire onto the top edge of that. A little bit of solder here. And then what I'm trying to do is hold the connector flat so I can just tack this on without moving the big wire. It's a little bit of pressure. That should be solid. I'm gonna hit that on the edge. All right, so I'll get you a look at that. It's not perfect, but that's a solid connection. It's all the way down in there. So same thing on the other side. This side's a little bit, or the second set, and whether it's the positive or the negative, is usually easier because uh, you get to hold this whole contraption with the other side of the wire now. So just a little bit of solder going in there first. And then I wanna double check these, make sure that they got tinned correctly. And this one looks like it got left out just a little bit there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. You could put the little one in there and do the big one right on top, but I found that over time, a lot of times you gotta service your charger plugs for whatever reason, they get a lot of use. So try to make them easy to get to. And again, same thing. We're just gonna try to make sure that we get the, geez, what's the, get the wire laid down in there. Downward pressure with the iron, you can feel the wire sink in, give it a little push forward that time. And that gets it all the way in there. Take a look. Pretty good. And then tack this guy. I think I'm gonna try to go on the side this time. It'll be a little easier. A little bit of solder. And bam. It's easier to solder the sensing wires or the, the balance wires onto the, the metal itself instead of the wire because that way you're less likely to reflow the solder that you just laid down. That guy looks pretty good. 
slide this up carefully, snap it into place. And there you have it. So now this guy gets plugged into the charger. This guy goes in on the balance lead and then I just use my main connector. And then over time, you know, if you have batteries for a while, you'll actually wear the plugs out. If you look inside there, they get real black and gross. So you can clean them. And then this way it allows you a real simple way, even safer to replace your plugs because you can unplug this from the battery pack, put a fresh plug on there and away you go. So that is a little bit of soldering soldering basics and a trick way to help yourself never plug things in backwards save on some wear and tear on your battery plugs and make a very easy to use charge adapter to make this whole system work together i hope you enjoyed if you do have any questions comments or concerns please shoot us an email north america at hobbywing.com don't forget the charlie show is new every tuesday right here on the hobbywing official youtube channel thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time